This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony. Mozart wrote his last three symphonies in the summer of 1788, and they were grander and more expansive than almost any symphony that had come before them. They broke new ground in the art of symphonic writing and set the stage for Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, and the great symphonists of the late 19th century like Brahms, Tchaikovsky, and Dvorak. But Mozart had really begun his new symphonic journey almost five years earlier with a work that took him only four days to write. These days, the city of Linz in Austria is best known for the jam-filled tarts known as Linzer Torts that were invented there in 1653. But in the late 18th century, it was a middling little town on the Danube, midway between Salzburg and Vienna. That was the trip Mozart and his wife Costanza were taking when they stopped there in November 1783. They had just finished a visit with Mozart's father, Leopold, trying to smooth over his disapproval of their marriage. Things had not gone well, although Leopold did lighten up eventually, but they brightened considerably when Wolfgang and Constanze were met at the gates of Linz by a representative of Count Thun, a family friend whose castle was one of the city's great landmarks. The Count insisted that the Mozarts stay with him, and to say thank you, Wolfgang offered to write a symphony for the Count's orchestra and perform it at a concert during his stay there. Mozart was used to working quickly, but he had less than a week to get the piece ready, composing, copying, and rehearsing. He wrote to his father on October 31st, On Tuesday, November 4th, I am giving a concert in the theater here, and as I have not a single symphony with me, I am writing a new one at breakneck speed, which must be finished by that time." End quote. Astonishingly enough, he did finish on time, and even more astonishingly, the symphony turned out to be his grandest yet. Mozart's Symphony No. 36 begins with a slow introduction. This was the first time Mozart had ever opened a symphony this way, but he did it again in numbers 38 and 39, and it became a trademark of the later symphonies by his friend Franz Josef Haydn. It's a stately and slightly solemn introduction, but the fanfare of the opening is followed by passages in the woodwinds and strings that seem to be anticipating something. They may be waiting for Mozart's next surprise, since the introduction is not the only novelty he worked into this symphony. Once the first movement begins, the opening theme is fairly straightforward, assuming you can say that anything Mozart wrote is straightforward, but the second theme provides another twist. Instead of Mozart's usual lyrical contrast to the opening theme, the second subject is blustery and in a minor key, and the effect is almost operatic. Another of Mozart's hallmarks is the questioning tone of the development section, as if he's pushing at boundaries. But however twisted his path might get, he always arrives home safely for the recapitulation. <music> the 
The second movement is more gentle. It has a graceful flow to it, in the style of what was known in Bach's time as Siciliano, or a melody from Sicily. Mozart did save himself from time and work here by recycling the main theme from a duo for violin and viola which he had written while he was in Salzburg. In the middle section, Mozart alternates between major and minor modes over a slightly ominous creeping bass melody. It gives a sense of gravity to the movement that you might not have expected from the graceful opening. Another composer might have cut down the orchestra to lighten the sound in the slow movement, but Mozart continues to use the full orchestra, including horns, trumpets, and timpani. Even though they never completely cut loose. In Mozart's time, the form of the symphony had developed from the three-movement Italian overture model into the four-movement structure that was dominant during the 19th century. The third movement was almost always a minuet, a dance in triple meter with an elegant or courtly air. But Mozart's minuet in this symphony has more of the feeling of a country dance. This is one of Mozart's most famous minuets, not only for the rustic feeling of the minuet itself, but also for the contrast between the minuet and the central trio section, which features a charming conversation between the solo oboe and solo bassoon. The finale starts right away in high spirits. Mozart throws out theme after theme until what seemed at first to be a random progression of melodies turns into a double counterpoint. Which returns in the recapitulation. And what's most amazing is that the counter melody is not much more than a drawn out pattern of just three notes, do, ti, do. It takes about four hours to make a Linzer tort. Mozart created his Linz symphony in four days. You could say that both have had profound effects on the tastes of the Western world. This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony.